Uh, we're with Wade Matthews right now talking um, about earthquake safety uh, with Be Ready. He's with Be Ready Utah. He's back in studio with us. And here's why this is uh, such an important conversation, because we're going to specifically talk about like the worst places to be in an earthquake. But let's backtrack, Dave. Let's backtrack, and actually it's still going on, the 2,900, almost 3,000 people killed in Morocco. That earthquake was a 6.8. Um, and, and we compared it earlier this week to our 5. Point, was it 7 earthquake in, in Magna right. in 2020. And we talked to Catherine Whidden, who's a research scientist uh, at the seismology station up at the University of Utah. Um, what stood out to you about our conversation with Catherine? Well, first of all, 5.7 and 6.8 sound kind of in the ballpark, right? There's only a 1.1 difference in, in magnitude. Well, she said there's a world of difference. It, they're not even the same conversation uh, that we, we should be having. In fact, the 6.8 is would be considered the big one we've been waiting for and preparing for for decades. And I think, if I recall, you, you're the one with the great memory bank here. Uh, a 6.8 compared to a 5.7, yeah, it's like you said, 1.1 difference, but it's 13 times stronger. Yeah, the waves that are coming through and passing through are 13 times stronger. So this was a much larger earthquake that they felt in Morocco, um, but it is on par uh, with the, the largest earthquake that we're expecting in, in Utah. We're expecting a magnitude 7, maybe up to 7.5 earthquake uh, on the Wasatch Fault, which would be uh, due to construction techniques, perhaps not quite as devastating as, as what they're seeing in Morocco right now, but it would be very, very devastating for us as well. Wade Matthews with Be Ready Utah, uh, Utah's Division of Emergency Management, back in studio with us. And Dave and I were talking after we spoke with Catherine live on the air. First of all, we were like stunned um, and concerned, but we were both curious, like, where are the most dangerous places for us to be uh, when we do have the big one? What, yeah, because I, I, we could be anywhere. We could be on the freeway where my, my grandmother was with the big earthquake in California, uh, in our homes, in our beds, wherever it might be. That's exactly right. We don't know where, when the next earthquake is going to hit, so we don't know where we will be. So we need to be prepared wherever that is. But some of the most dangerous places, Debbie, is you know in our homes will be in the kitchen. Oh, in the kitchen where we've got lots of cupboards full of canned goods and dishes and glasses and pots and pans hanging above the stove and things like that that uh, could be flying off those shelves and start hitting us. You know, hitting us and causing injury. Uh, so that's a very dangerous place in the house. Also, maybe. In the bathroom area, there's not a lot of place where you can take cover. A lot of times there's glass um, shower doors and surrounds and things like that. That could be a dangerous oh. area as well. Um, I, I know, Dave, you had an experience after we had one of these discussions with your kids' bedrooms. And and that, and that I think that's I think you should share it. And I think it was, uh, did you call it a home hazard hunt? Yeah. Where you said, hey, th this is what you can do. Look around your house and see where the hazards are. And one of the recommendations was, look, if you have a, a bookshelf or something sitting over your bed, uh, and sure enough, my, I, I'd prop my son right under, like, all Some the shelving. trophies Aww, and heavy yeah. books. I, like, it would have impaled him <laughs> ten different ways. Uh, and we did. We moved the, the bed over to the other side of the room. Exactly. That home hazard hunt is really important to mitigate the risk that we face when an earthquake occurs, moving heavy objects from high shelves to low shelves. First of all, fastening tall furniture to the walls in the first place with L brackets or little nylon straps that come with the furniture that you buy. Fasten those into the studs so the furniture is not falling over on us, wherever we might be. Then moving, as I said, uh, heavy objects from high shelves to low shelves back in the kitchen. You, know, you can use that uh, contact paper and kind of rubber shelf yeah. liner to keep things from falling. Uh, actually putting childproof locks on those cabinets, what we do with our kids to keep them from opening the oh. cupboards. That'll keep those cupboards closed. Most people don't want to go to that effort, though. So the best thing to do is know the protective action, drop cover, and hold on. If you can get away from those things, get under a dining table or someplace nearby, up against a wall that doesn't have any glass or cupboards overhead, that'll give you that protection.
as much as possible. Flashback to the first home we bought, and we totally remodeled it, and I blew out a kitchen wall and put a big shelf between the kitchen and the living room, and I put the heaviest things (laughs) money could buy on those shelves because they were decorative, in my view, not even thinking that that could be one of the biggest hazards in the kitchen and that living room space were the we were that's where we were all the time as a family so that was not that was not earthquake wise right right another dangerous area in relation to the kitchen is like grocery stores and in that situation just tip your uh, cart over and kind of climb into that cart and give you that what? cover overhead from- okay Hold on a minute. We're talking to Wade Matthews of Be Ready Utah. We got to go back on that thought in just a minute. Uh, because Dave and I had a conversation with the seismology station at the University of Utah earlier this week, and they, they said, you know, what happened in Morocco is at least the size of the earthquake uh, that we're expecting here in Utah in the next 50 years or right. so. So get back to the, the grocery cart. How is Dave going to crawl? <laughs> crawl it's a big grocery it? cart. Right. You're gonna be shopping Wear it at, like a hat. You're going to be Costco. shopping at Costco when Costco this happens, cart. Dave. Okay. You know, a lot of people, when that earth starts shaking, we panic and we're going to start running towards the exits. That's a bad idea. Just where you're at, just if you can get to the end of an aisle, away from the shelving as much as possible, if you can move, in, in the, depending on how violent the shaking is. But tip that cart over and use that as cover from things that might be falling. One of the things that, that I have learned uh, – being with Be Ready Utah, is uh, the danger isn't so much the collapse of the building. And I think that's where my mind always was. You know, we're going to have this building collapse, but it sounds like you're less concerned and it's less common that the building collapses. It's the stuff around you that is going to really hurt you. Right. As the seismologist from U of U noticed, you know, we do have a lot better uh, building codes and building construction uh, practices here than we than maybe in other countries. We do know that we have unreinforced masonry buildings along the Wasatch Front, and some of our computer modeling has, has shown us that we can expect a lot of damage in those types of buildings and potential injury and death there as well. We're not totally immune from it, but we do have better structures here. Okay, so... In 30 seconds, give us the best advice on where we need to be in our homes uh, when the big one hits. Wherever you're at, you just drop, cover, and hold on. There's not You're not going to have a chance to really move to that best spot. But drop, cover, and hold on. Get underneath a desk, table, a chair, or up against a wall without glass. And just cover your head and neck with your arms and your hands. Kitchen, living room, wherever you're at, that's what you have to do. Because it is kind of tricky to move during it the is. earthquake. Right. But I'd also heard when I was younger, you know, get in a doorway. But you told us a great piece of advice about doorways I haven't thought of before we started talking to you. Right, exactly. We do not recommend doorways anymore. That door can be violently, you know, moving back and forth and, and smack like, bam, into us. and bam, bam, in the face. Smack fingers and so on. Yeah, so we don't recommend doorways anymore. I think Debbie's daughter lost a finger in a doorway she one did, time. When she was eight months oh. old. Oh. Yeah, not because of an earthquake. Right. It was because of her, her brother. Yeah, okay. slamming doors. But you know, but he was three. Okay? There's an example. <laughs> he was Stay three. out of the doorways, whether you're a kid or an adult in an earthquake. Right. Wade Matthews, thank you. Be ready.utah.gov is a great resource that we tap into, uh, especially for earthquakes.